What's going on guys? John Lauder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to build the model for a convolutional neural network with PyTorch and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build a model for our convolutional neural network. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube 50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we sort of walked through step by step what the model is going to do using just one image. In this video, we want to build out the actual model to go through all the images and do everything all at once. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. If you didn't see the last video, check the link in the description below. You can also get the code down there as well. So we've got our CNN Jupyter Notebook open in Google Colab. And this is all the stuff we did in the last video. So let's come down here and let's start to define out our model. So first we want to call this class and then let's call this convolutional network. It's going to be the name of our model class. And this is going to be nn.module. There we go. And this nn.module, of course, we imported torch nn as nn way back at the beginning of this whole thing. So there we go there. We just need to do some basic class stuff. This is just Python class stuff. We need to define underscore underscore init underscore underscore and then pass in self. And if you're familiar with object oriented programming, you're you've seen this sort of thing before. And then we need to define a super open and close parentheses and then dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore and then two more parentheses. That's just basic class stuff. It doesn't have anything to do with neural networks or anything like that. So we've got our class defined here. Now we need to bring in our convolutional layers that we talked about in the last video. So let's go self dot conv one and that's going to be nn dot conv 2d. And remember, this is going to be one, six, three and one. So this should look familiar. This nn dot conv two dimension. We looked at that in the last video right here. We've just taken this code and put it into object oriented format. So self dot instead of just plain open just like this. And we're also going to do this for the second convolutional network of six, 16, three and one. So let's come down here and let's just go ahead and do that. Self dot conv two is going to be in and dot com two D. And then again, this is going to be six, 16, three and one. And again, if you're not familiar with what this is, go watch the video from last week, we talked about all this in great detail. This is the input. This is the output. This is the, the kernel. And this is the stride length. So this six outputs becomes this six inputs. The next time around, we're going to do 16, we're going to keep this three and one. So okay, that looks good there. We also need a fully connected layer, or a few of them actually. And you remember if we look up our convolutional neural network image, well, this is kind of blurry, but we've seen this many times at the end, we flatten this out and we have fully connected neural layers, right? Just like a regular neural network. So that's what we need to define here as our fully connected layers. And let's do three of these, I think. So let's go self dot, we're going to call this FC one, and that's going to be a neural network dot linear. And then this is going to be a five by five by 16. And let's flatten these out to 120 neurons. And this should be a five. There we go. So this five by five by 16, we talked about this at the end of the last video. That's this thing right here, five by five by 16. Go back and watch that video. And this 120 neurons, we're flattening this out to 120 neurons. This is just sort of arbitrary. I'm just going to go with 120 there. So, okay. We need to do, like I said, a couple of these. We're going to do three. So FC2 is also going to be an end dot linear. Here, we're going to take that 120 output from the last time around, and that's going to be our input. And then the second time around, let's say 84 ish. So we're starting with 120. We're going to move down to 84. Every time we go down, it's going to decrease, right? And then finally, let's go self dot FC3, and that's going to equal an end dot linear. And again, we're going to start with the 84 that we ended last time, and we're going to end with 10. These numbers here really doesn't matter. These are kind of arbitrary. You just sort of play around with them to get something that you like. 
but it always has to end in 10, right? Because that's the number of classes that we have here in this data set. So, okay. So we've got our convolutional layers defined. We've got our fully connected layers defined. Now we need a forward function. You know, anytime you're in a neural network, you need to have something pushing things forward. You know, it starts at the beginning, goes to the convolutional layer, the pooling layer, the convolutional layer, the, the pooling layer, fully connected layer, etc. You got to have a forward function that pushes all that through, right? So here also this needs to line up with this define function. So come down here and just tab over once. So if you see, if you held a piece of paper up to the screen or something, you could see these two definition, define function things are lined up. So that's important. This is going to be a forward function, and we're going to pass in self, and we're going to pass in x. In the last video, we called this lowercase x. Now we're calling this uppercase x just because. So now we need to do our f dot rectified linear units. Remember this guy from in the last video right here. Same deal. And this is going to be convolutional one of x. So down here, we'll pass in our self dot conv one of capital X. Next, we will do some pooling. So f dot max underscore pool 2d. We want to pass in that x and two by two. There we go. So remember, in the last video, we did the same thing right here. And again, if you don't remember, that's a two by two kernel and a stride of two, right? That's those two there. Remember when we pool, we're like taking data away. So dividing there by two. So that's sort of the, the first pass. We also want a second pass. Remember, we've got two pooling layers here. So let's just, man, let's just copy all this stuff. Let's get lazy. I like lazy. <laughs> so the second time around, it's going to be our second convolutional layer. So uh, self.conv2. And this all stays the same. All right. Once we go through all this, we need to flatten this stuff out. And to do that, we need to review our data to flatten it out. So let's go x equals x dot view. And we want this to be negative one. And then again, that's 16 by five by five. And it's a negative one so that we can vary the batch size. Okay. And again, this is 16 by five by five, 16 five by five, 16 five by five. It's the end thing of our pooling layer, right? From the last video. So finally, we need our fully connected layers. We need to add those to the forward function so that, you know, we're going through our convolutional layer one, our pooling layer one, convolutional layer two, pooling layer two, and then we hit our fully connected layers. And we've got three of those, remember? So let's go x equals. And again, this is just going to be f dot r e l u. And then we're going to pass in that self dot f c one of x, which we defined uh, right here, self dot f c one. So that's the first fully connected layer, then that passes over to f dot r e l u of self dot uh, f c two of x. And then the final one is just self dot f c three of x. Oops. There we go. FC3 of X. We're not doing the RELU on the very last one because it's the last one. And we need an equal to sign. All right, there we go. And then finally, we just need to return all this stuff. So we want to return this as an F dot log underscore underscore soft max of X. And we need to define the dimensions here. They're just going to be one. That's kind of all there is to it. We can shift enter to run this. Hopefully we don't get any errors. And that looks good. So now we need to create an instance of our model. And we need to set a, a manual seed just so that our numbers come out the same. My numbers will be the same as your numbers if you're following along. So we've done this before torch dot manual underscore seed, put in any number if you want yours to come out the same as mine, I'm going to use number 41 because it's the magic number. <laughs> so if you want your numbers to come out as same as mine, use 41 or you can use really any number you want. And then so let's set up an instance of our model. So this is going to be a convolution. There it is convolutional network, because that's what we called it up here, right? And then we just need to run this. So just call model shift enter to run this. And hopefully you don't get any errors. If you did come back through here, and just kind of test all your code versus this, maybe you have a typo somewhere, 
If not, you should get something like this. It should have these same numbers. Remember, we're starting with one, we're going six, our kernel size is three, three, our stride is one. Then the second convolutional layer, that output of six becomes the input. Then we did 16, same kernel size and stride. And then we have these fully connected layers, the three of them we just created. It started out with 400, went to 120, goes down to 84, out features 10. So finally, before we move on to the training of our guy here, we need a loss function optimizer. Optimizer, there we go. And so we'll set our criterion to, and here it's gonna be nn.crossentropy loss, I spelled that right, cross entropy loss. Yep, that looks good. Uh, and then our optimizer, we need to pick an optimizer for this. And so we're gonna use torch.optim and we're gonna use the atom optimizer. We've looked at this before as well. And here we just wanna pass in our model parameters. So model.parameters. We need to designate a learning rate, of course, here. So learning rate of, we're gonna go 0 0.001. And for this, the smaller the learning rate, uh, the longer it's gonna take to train. So you can make this number bigger to make it faster, but your training won't be as good, right? So uh, you just sort of play around with this to get the number that you know works out good. 0 0.001, this is gonna take, I don't know, two, three, four, maybe five minutes to train this guy with a learning rate of that. You wanna speed it up, make this bigger. But again, I think that will work good. And so we can shift enter to run this and we're good to go. That's our model. We've now set it up. Everything looks good. Yep, yep. We've got an instance of the model running and we've got our loss function optimizer all set up. In the next video, we'll start to look at training. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.